Hi guys and welcome back to Movies That Matter with The Viking, another big DC film that we're really looking forward to and hopefully it gets released this October. It's been delayed a few times due to the coronavirus and that's Wonder Woman 1984, the sequel to the very successful 2017 first solo film for Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins, which I really loved back in 2017 and was supposed to be one of the build-up films leading into Justice League, but we know how that, that turned out. But now we kind of look at Wonder Woman 1984 as kind of the build-up movie to Zack Schneider's Justice League, so it's kind of funny. How things worked out. Now, Brandon Davis at comicbook.com, who recently did the documentary for hashtag release the Schneider Cut movement, which I was very proud to be a part of. Definitely go check that out. You can see it on the YouTube channel on comicbook.com. Very well done and very insightful and a look at the love that the fan base has for the hashtag, hashtag release the Schneider Cut, which eventually led to the film's announcement. But Two years ago, he got to be on set for Wonder Woman 1984, and of course, got to do with um, you know restrictions. He wasn't able to talk about what he's seen or what he was told on set until now. So he's recently done a video and an article on what he's seen and who he talked to in Wonder Woman 1984 set. I'll leave the link to the video and to the article. Some very interesting stuff. But finally, Brandon Davis can now talk about this, and he. He gave us some interesting things to think about got to do with the Wonder Woman 1984 film, which again, hopefully will release in October. But he said the movie is going to start in Temesera. Now, I always butcher that name, but that's the, the home place. That's the home island of the of the Amazonians, of, of Wonder Woman, of Diana. Of course, we got to see her leave in uh, Wonder Woman in 2017. But also, if you look at Zack Schneider's Justice League, there will be some scenes that take place on Temesera. So that's great. And we get to see more of it in Wonder Woman 1984. But the movie opens there. And we got to see kind of images of the big poles that they're walking across, a young Diana. And seemingly there is a big set there for like an Olympic-style Amazonian games, which would be pretty cool to see. Also, he revealed that Diana is now living in, living in Washington, D.C. She's staying on down low but she's working in a Smithsonian museum and she's also still saving the world. So that leaves the question about did she go completely quiet after Wonder Woman, uh, after the World War? Did she not um, reveal herself to be Wonder Woman anymore? But no, he said that she is still saving the world, but she's doing it very, very quietly, which is pretty cool to see that she didn't give up her sword or her shield she still fought for what's right even though she went through some struggles and that kind of shows that batman versus superman was not her first outing since the world war maybe it was her first outing since one Woman 84 maybe we don't know we'll get to see maybe some of that cleared up in future films but also pedro pascal who is playing maxwell lord is one of the villains in this film and his character design and maybe his character portrayal is very much inspired by Donald Trump. Now, not more, not kind of like the political standpoint, as in terms of him being the president and what's going on today, but more of what Donald Trump represented back in the 1980s. This rich businessman, this flashy, uh, well suited, uh, loads of um, good looking girls, uh, money, all that kind of stuff. That's what Pedro Pascal's Maxwell Lord kind of resembles and kind of in a way shows what a man like this could end up becoming the president of the world or of the world it might as well be the world he has that so much power that much impact on the media the united states donald trump so that's going to be a, a, a very cool similarity some very cool parallels i think this film is actually going to be very metaphorical even more than the wonder woman in 2017 so that's going to be interesting i think this film is going to kind of hit a lot of uh, points that we have in today's society maybe got to do with race got to do with sexism got to do with the political world got to do with the media so that's actually gonna be very interesting I think this is going to be a more of a deeper metaphorical film than the one we got in 2017 which uh, for me i really like those films that kind of tell you a different kind of message tell you a different story without trying to throw it in your face you kind of have to look for those kind of things and we can relate to them in today's society so i'm very much looking forward to them but those points are very interesting um diana is, is staying down low she's living in washington she's working in a museum of course we get to see her in in in, in justice league she works in a museum in london as well doing kind of similar things so that's kind of what 
interests her that's kind of what drives her in her personal life when she's not trying to save the world but also she does make time for saving the world but she just does it very much quietly that's why she was staying on the d low uh, during um batman versus superman and then lex Luthor made her reappear by by showing that he had images of her in the war jeopardizing her identity and her private life that she was trying to live so brandon got to sit down with gal and she goes talking about her character she's engaging with people but she doesn't have any close relationship because it's either she's going to hurt them or at some point she'll have to disappear or she's going to get hurt because they'll die and she won't and i think she accepted that as a fact she you know at her core her calling is to be here and to help mankind to do good and that's exactly what she's doing but she's still missing you know the one who was the love of her life she never got to really explore the relationship and that's it but she's happy she's very happy and i love this kind of quote from gal gadot and it shows yeah we got to see their entire relationship in one Woman 17 we did we got to see the their complete relationship and it was very fast paced they had to meet that to deal with what was going on that deal with the the areas you know they had to deal with stuff like that so they never really got time to kind of relax to chill to live their life together and that's kind of a regret that diana has that steve trevor ended up dying and she never got to explore that side of her maybe she's afraid to love again and we know steve trevor appears back in this film we don't know how though but i'm sure that impacts her a lot and that's kind of a pretty sad point that she kind of keeps to herself. She's kind of lonely. She doesn't want to get more connection with people. She doesn't want to engage too much with people because she knows she'll either outlive them or she'll have to walk away or they will die. And that's kind of a very cool uh, parallel to what we live in our life, in our society. Some people are lonely. Some people are people die or they're in a bad breakup. So they're afraid to connect and engage with people again for fear that they'll be hurt or they'll hurt that person going forward. Now, this is what Patty Jenkins had to say regarding Maxwell Lord and the kind of uh, parallel between Donald Trump. Trump is one of the inspirations. The funny thing is, like, he is an influence. I'm not trying to make a point. Even we have the president in this movie, and I've gone out of my way not to make it look like Ronald Reagan. I don't want to get political. It's not about political. Actually, a huge influence of this movie was also Madoff. And so what I was looking at was those young Madoff story fascinates me because I'm like, how do you end up being Bernie Madoff and when you really start tracking that story it's like it all started out in a way that made sense and he was paying it off and then doing this and then paying it off again and then it's like you just become an evil dude when you don't even realize that it's happening so yes Trump's definitely one of the people that we looked at so this shows that Patty Jenkins political view towards Donald Trump she doesn't really like him as the president of the United States which is her opinion which is her which is, which is fair i am not from america i can't really talk on uh, the impact that donald trump has on a country but different people have different perspectives of him as a man and in patty jenkins eyes her villain is uh, based off him in many ways of how he he lived his life how he does still to this day live his life and the influence he has as a person compared to what he had in the 1980s but he still had a big influence in terms of he had wealth he had businesses you know he had that kind of influence. now he has probably more or less the same kind of influence he has on people you know so it just shows what power can do to people people get power hungry when they're put into that position they can change or they can get worse you know they, they really can so that's it that's kind of what she's implementing here towards what maxwell lord is based off of a donald trump type character who can have money who can have success who can have uh, people in love with him but then they're given too much they're given a little bit more each time and then the resultant to be this actual menacing villain which which i'm sure maxwell lord will uh, end up getting i'm sure donald trump has the power of, of being the president i'm sure maxwell lord will get some sort of kind of a, a supernatural power which will give him this kind of essence and similarity to donald trump which is actually very interesting i'm interested to see how it plays out paddy goes on to say but it's 
any of those kind of mavericks of business success that was big in the 80s went on to become major players in our world and potentially questionable in other ways that kind of echoes my point about getting too much power getting too much leeway getting too much responsibility and then taking that to the point that they shouldn't have and they're using their power and their wealth for wrong so that kind of echoes what i was trying to say there and it's interesting it's going to be really cool to see how this all plays out in the end Brandon also got to speak to Steve Trevor himself, Chris Pine. This is what Chris had to say. You can decide whether it's the right way or not. A tight-lipped Pine, still wearing his jumpsuit from the set, said of Steve Trevor's return. I love Paddy and I love Gal and that I'm working on this film. I think it's romantic and old-fashioned in the best way and simple way in the best way and doesn't reinvent the wheel in the best way. It's just a great, good old-fashioned storytelling. So right... I have no idea, but I know that anytime Patty pitches something with me, she can pitch me anything. She's the single best pitcher of ideas I've ever come across in the history of pitching. And this is what kind of uh, what people were talking about when it was announced that Chris Pine would be returning for the sequel. People were like, but he died. He died. He did die. And this kind of is similar to what Marvel has been doing for years someone dies oh they're not really die they they come back you know that kind of uh, cliche of uh, oh they're dead they're not dead they come back blah 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 that kind of was my fear for wonder woman 84 and that's what many people feared and maybe that's even what chris pine in this is kind of hinting at he kind of feared this similar uh, outcome of his character coming back but it sounds like that that patty pitched the idea to him and in the end He was convinced by her vision of this character, of this story of him coming back. And he seems to be fully behind it. So at the start, he might have been hesitant, like many of us fans were, that Steve Trevor is coming back. And what capacity is he coming back? We don't know. Has it got to do with Maxwell Lord and the power he gets? Is he actually back? Does Wonder Woman meet something else where she's able to bring Steve back? That's going to be pretty cool to see also. But it sounds like that he was hesitant, just like us fans. But Patty is great at pitching ideas, pitching stories. And she had this vision. And she said she got this through the halfway of making one woman one this idea of bringing steve back this story this essence and i i can't wait for it and he's fully fully behind the story so there we go some more details got to do with wonder woman 84 and hopefully it gets to release in october and hopefully the virus um subsides in some way or allows us to go back to theaters do i think will wonder woman 84 will come out in october I have my doubts. I think it could be pushed back to 2021 if they really want to have this as a theatrical experience. If they want to go with digital and open up in some areas in the world where you can show movies, then that could be an option for October. But do they really want to do that? Will they make their money back? Like Especially here now, the virus is getting ramped up again. Restrictions are coming back in. So it's it's hard to know what the, 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 what the world's going to be like in just eight weeks or so time, ten weeks time for one moment's release. Um, you know, so like my area around here cinemas aren't open right now you have to travel a bit to go to a theater to watch old movies so it will be interesting i have my doubts that will come out in 2020 maybe 2021 but let's wait and see but these are all interesting and exciting um points to hear from brandon davis about wonder woman 84 about how the film would start pedro pascal's villain christian wig of of course we haven't seen her in her full essence as cheetah i'm looking forward to that i have my doubts of her as an actor i like her in some things other things i don't like her in but I'm sure she can do a great job. And here, Chris Pine coming back as well. Absolutely brilliant. I always thought he kind of would suit a great kind of superhero character. Maybe like a Green Lantern. He would be pretty cool as a Green Lantern. But he kind of seems that he was attracted to the story more than the actual essence of being a superhero for Wonder Woman 1. Which is which is fair enough and pretty cool. And he gets to come back for Wonder Woman 84, which I'm happy about. Gal Gadot, of course, Zack Schneider casting. Absolutely brilliant as wonder woman and we get to see her we've already seen her in batman vs superman and wonder woman one we get to see her in wonder woman two we got to see her in justice league in 2017 we get to see her in justice league in 2021 so five appearance or so of wonder woman and she really has brought the character to life such a highly successful character so many young girls look up to so i'm sure gal does an absolute great job especially second time around working with, with patty jenkins who is a great director and then the maxwell lord himself pedro pascal very good actor you know uh, really enjoying the mandalorian you know uh, i i can't wait for season two of that he gave a really good performance and that even though you got to, don't get to see his uh his acting kind of facial expressions going off but 
I like there's a certain kind of mystery around his villain. Is he powerful? Is he supernatural power? What 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 way does he manipulate people? Like how was he actually going to work as a villain? And I'm actually interested to see because there's two villains in this film. There's Cheetah and there's Maxwell Lord. Now I have a feeling that Cheetah won't be an all right villain. I think she will have some. Um, uh, some essence of her that we will like and other essence that we won't but i think maxwell lord is to be there to be the definite villain the real bad guy you know the real kind of donald trump they're looking at as this kind of bad person that people don't want to associate with in the end but kind of face value he is very very popular i can't wait for that but it's great to see wonder woman 84 coming to tears in october hopefully patty jenkins chris pine gal gadot have a great relationship a great working environment and i wonder will one roman 84 does it have any hints towards Zack schneider's justice league and um, of course it's a prequel i wonder at the end of the film do we get to see her working in london at the end of the film is it setting her off a message another message from bruce wayne that it's hard to know um because at the end of One Woman One, we got to see a message from Bruce Wayne and she was going to kind of save the day again. Will we get to see something else in this film similar to that? I don't know. Let's wait and see. But as always, guys, let me know your thoughts and all these details from comicbook.com. Gets me even more excited for the film and I can't wait. And I expect a trailer this Saturday for One Woman 84. Another look inside the world of Diana, Steve Trevor and Patty Jenkins. I can't wait. Looking forward to it. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Until next time, guys. Always remember, DC fandom is this Saturday, motherfucker.